Welcome to the greatest show you'll ever see anywhere on broadcast or digital media. It is Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba. Mary, um, listen, we'll bring in John Sarno, our good friend from Employers Association of New Jersey. But real quick, have we not just brought on a new sponsor to Lessons in Leadership? We did. I'm really excited about it. So our newest sponsor is Veolia, used to be Suez Water. And uh, yeah, so Veolia, more than water. So uh, we're really excited. And thank you to Rich Henning and all of the great folks over there. Yeah, Congratulations. We'll John, thank you, the, John. Is, that's because he's a team player. He knows how important it is to bring in the <laughs> revenue. That is John Sarno. He's the president of Employers Association of New Jersey. Check out their website. Sylvester will put it up, our, our great post-production Leader will put it up. Hey, John, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Yourself. You, you both look great. great uh, pleasure to be with the both of you. Thank you. Hey, John, give us 30 seconds on Employers Association of New Jersey so people know what it is. We help good employers be better. Uh, that is our mission. And uh, we provide support, counsel, education, training. And uh, it's if you're an employer that wants to take the next great step, to be employee centric, uh, to be uh, to, to raise the level of productivity and wellness, we're the organization to uh, work with. We had a, Jim Mary and I had a great conversation with John, who's been our friend and colleague for a long time. Supports what we do on public broadcasting, um, and we were talking about. Listen, we've lost some talented people on our team, and I keep wondering, as employers, give us three things. Can't guarantee what people do. Sometimes you offer them a hundred grand more. We ain't keeping you. OK, you got to go because you choose to go because you go for the money. Beyond that, three things employers need to do to give themselves the best chance to keep the best people. Go ahead, John. Well, uh, the three things uh, are the hardest things for a business to do. Uh, clearly, uh, we know that um, reorganizing or, or reengineering some of the work that we do uh, having people have more control over their work, be more autonomous, uh, be more involved in the decision-making process. Uh, th that is absolutely goal number one, to increase engagement. Uh, the other is you know, a leadership issue. Um, you don't want to be a cheerleader, uh, but you, the, the, the leader, whether you're on the shop floor or in the executive suite, has to be able to communicate uh, on an ongoing level to give uh, feedback and both positive and, and constructive. Oh, and, stay right uh, there, John, stay right there. Yep, feedback, yep. positive and negative. Mary's gonna jump in as well. Is it my imagination or are people disproportionately younger people, I'm generalizing, I know, but people in general more sensitive to feedback that is less than, oh, you're terrific, you're amazing, meaning you have to give constructive, specific feedback that is about performance that's less than great. Are people more sensitive than ever before to that? Uh, yeah, uh, and, and it cuts across a generation. It's not only letting people know where they stand, uh, but it's also about um, helping people understand the bigger goal and to understand how their work connects, connects to the collective work. And so, you know, part of people being disengaged in what they're doing is there's this disconnect between you know feeling like a cog in this larger machine and not being able to make the connection to the greater good, the greater goal. So that is a big, big part of the communication process. I asked you three things before I throw the ball to Mary. How corny is that, Mary? Before I throw the ball <laughs> to Mary. Is the third thing money, John? Is the third thing money? Uh, yeah, compensation, compensation will always matter. No question about it. Uh, it's going to be, you know, top three uh, concerns that and, you know, advancement and be able yeah. to develop in the job. Yep. Ball is yours, Mary. Oh, well, thanks. I wish I had a ball here. I could pretend like I caught it. That would have been a uh, lot of fun. I, I should learn by this point to have a ball and other props right here. So, John, have you found with uh, the working remotely, people are working, literally, we have a team member that's working from South Carolina, another team member that's working from Texas. Even though it has brought these opportunities, are there various challenges in terms of not getting that face time uh, in terms of retention, right? Uh, have you found that that is a challenge, having people work in remote uh, capacities? Well, it depends. I mean, the whole, it really depends on the personality, right? I mean, even if we were all live back at work pre-pandemic, 
uh, you know, there's always going to be those folks who prefer to uh, be solo, who uh, enjoy, you know, working on their own, uh, interacting with the team when necessary. So, um, I mean, I think that hasn't changed is, you know, knowing the characteristics, the attributes of the individual team members and trying to accommodate that. Um, you know, I think uh, the level of fatigue, um, you know, varies. Uh, you can be just as tired at work uh, in real time, but also at home. So you try to be aware of the energy level. That's perhaps a little bit challenging when you're on a Zoom call or you're on a phone. But I think a sensitive leader really picks up on the individual uh, idiosyncratic attribute of each person on the team. Hey, John, you believe in this, quote, great resignation thing, or is it overblown? No, it's exaggerated, clearly. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, anecdotally, uh, again, there was a, some suggestion that during the high point of the pandemic, people were reevaluating what, what they were doing, uh, you know, reevaluating re what their career uh, objectives uh, were going to be. I think where the resignations, uh, the big resignations, the quitting is really in the retail, service industry, restaurant, hospitality. Mm. Uh, so I, I think it really is a, a problem for that segment of the industry. But the great resignation, I think, has been, I think, overblown. Yeah. Last question, Mary, before we let John out of here. And by the way, we'll put up the Employers Association of New Jersey website again. Uh, members, before Mary jumps back in, how many members, who are they, John? Well, it, you know, we're, we're about a thousand members. It's uh, employers in New Jersey, uh, a tremendous cross-section, uh, not necessarily businesses. I've said this before. Nonprofits as well? A lot of nonprofits. Mary, Actually, did we pay our dues? Did we? I've never, I, asked I, you, I've never asked you for a membership, Steve. You know what? I should ask what it costs, but I won't do that on the air. Uh, John's been <laughs> we'll talk offline about that. EANJ, EANJ org. You can fill Mary, out an application. Mary, we, we, we're never one. We're not the people who say one thing and do another. By the end of the day, Mary Gamba, who does 18 things in a day plus, oh. will go on the website. and we should, we should, I'm, I'm embarrassed that we didn't do that. Okay, last question, Mary. I, I will no say problem. that Mary, Mary is our quintessential perfect internal customer so Aww. so so if you do want to be wait a minute you want to be a member if you do want to be a member we're going to be supporting mary in her role why she hold on it's called steve Adubato's lessons in leadership with mary gamba and now she's the greatest thing since ice cream <laughs> uh you can call me anytime i she's love it i love it anytime anytime uh, any day you can always get access to me steve Hey, Mary, uh, well, go ahead, Mary, last question. Yeah, no, thank you, John. And one of the things, I mean, Steve and I have worked for 21 years together, and a lot of who I am today is because of Steve and leadership development. Talk yeah. about the importance of that. We have a lot of young people coming out of college. What, tip, what tips and tools do you have in terms of what they need to be trained on in terms of their own leadership and what skills do they need to be successful in the workforce? Well, it's a, it's a great question. So um, I just finished up a uh, teaching a leadership class, and uh, I'll, I'll real briefly, uh, you know, the first thing is presence, right? We want our, this next generation of leaders to um, not only learn from us, because we're, you know, going to be the role models and continue to be their role models, but we also want to spend some time on their presence, what they sound like, what they look like, how they come across, how they interact with their team members. We want to ensure that they have a strong sense of self, not necessarily being egocentric, uh, egotistical, but have a very strong sense of who they are, where they want to go. Um, so I, I, I think uh, we're, we're going to, we, the imperative, really, the great imperative for our generation is to uh, ensure that we're nur nurturing the next generation of, of leaders. So I think if they, if, if they know who they are, uh, with our guidance, they're going to do just fine. On that note, I want to say this. For 21 years, well, Mary Gamba has led, I'm, and I joke because I've run out of superlatives to describe Mary Gamba, but she has run our not-for-profit Stand and Deliver Leadership Development Program for inner city youth, four to 500 young people every year, 
in which we teach them, as John Sarno said, presence, executive presence, presentation skills, how to carry themselves, look people in the eye, shake their hand. I'm not talking about texting. I'm talking about communicating and being direct and clear and standing on your own two feet. Mary has run that program for 21 years with a great team of people. Go ahead, John, last word. My, 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 I've, I've been with my staff 20 plus years, Mary, and you know, and Steve knows, it's, it, it's all about trust. And you know, that occurs over time, but there is this telepathy, right? When you're together that long, um, that, that, that there's a tremendous uh, yeah. amount of trust and, and a very high level of integrity in the work. Uh, there's a lot of telepathy. Mary's, I don't know where, you, Mary's somewhere in central Jersey. I'm in North Jersey. John, is, are you at corporate? Whatever corporate I means. am in Essex County, always in Essex County. I love, yeah, me too. I don't leave the county. So Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba, John Sarno, this is Lessons in Leadership. John, cannot thank you enough. Well, it was a pleasure. Have a great day, both of you. Thanks, my friends. We'll be, my friends, plural. That includes everyone out there on News 12 Plus and all the other platforms watching us. We'll be right back after this. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Steve Adubato, Mary Gamba. Well, I'll get that out. I'm a professional broadcaster. You may not have realized that. We'll bring in our good friend, Mike Spenley, in a minute. Mary, please do this. Let everyone know who our sponsors are, because we Ooh, bring in the to. revenue to pay for this show. Well, I know, right? I mean, that's the hardest thing that we have to do is raise the money. So I'm very thankful that you give me this opportunity to do it. And I am going to pull out my notes to make sure that I don't miss anybody. So we have Veolia, who is our newest sponsor. So thank you to Rich Henning and the team there. Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the New Jersey Sharing Network, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, Seton Hall University and the Pacino Leadership Institute, the North Ward Center, Kessler Foundation, and Delta Dental of New Jersey. So thank you all so much for your support. Got to bring in the money. And speaking about people who understand business, Mike Spenley is a longtime friend. He's the director of play and the start at Forest Hill, the great Forest Hill Field Club, where I've been a member. Don't ask me how and why they allowed me in many years ago. Um, and also the owner of Mike Spenley VoiceOvers. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you for having me, Steve. Hi, Mary. Hello, Mike. Hey, Mike, let everyone know Forest Hill Field Club is a um, more than a club for people who play golf. It's a lot more than that. It was founded, let me get this right, Mike. Is it 1896? 1896, the original golf course was founded in, in downtown Newark, okay? The site that we are presently at, uh, construction began in 1925 and it opened as a Forest Hill Field Club, as you know it now, in 1929. Now we're gonna be showing some video in just a minute and, and to let everyone know in all seriousness, Mike, and we'll talk about the voiceover business in a minute. You can check out Mike's, Mike's great voice on our website, Stan Dash. Deliver.com. He introduces our, our leadership library. Just check that out. But right now, Mike, describe what it means to do what you do, how you do it in terms of managing people, time, personality, schedules. Wow, there's a massive renovation going on at Forest Hill Field Club. Go ahead, Mike. I mean, it's obviously a busier place than it normally is, but once we got past COVID a couple of years ago, the golf business took off. So we were you know, used to being really, really busy. There's some challenges now with trucks going by. I tell most of our members, you have to keep your head down when you play, but keep your head up now until we finish construction because there's a lot of stuff that's going on. But it's not actually that much more difficult than normal day, Steve. It's just taking uh, one hour at a time and trying to keep people organized and to the T on time so we can keep this thing flowing. And you can also check out uh, Jason Fury, who is um, the head pro at Forest Hill. He was on Lessons in Leadership a while back, did a great interview. And, and the owner of the club, um, Rob decided uh, to make Forest Hill even better than it was. And this is not to say just great things about the club because it was great before, but the renovation that we're gonna about be about to show some video of 
it changes the course, makes it more interesting and challenging. I believe the great Tom Kite was involved, uh, the great golfer Tom Kite was involved in the redesign. Why innovate, why change, Mike, when you already have a good thing? Well, many good things last through time, but sometimes we need to put a new coat of paint on it and possibly a new look. And Ron Marziato has taken that and then some. Uh, he's redesigned a couple of holes along with Mr. Tom Kite, as you mentioned, uh, jazzed up a couple of things, just made it a better golf course and more attractive to people. The place was always good. It had great guts. But now he made those guts uh, a little more attractive, more playable, uh, very friendly to the women. We've increased our tee size here at Forest Hill. So, so many things go into the, uh, to the blender to make it better. And we're, we're following his leadership as we do that. Real quick, Mike, before Mary jumps in, because we're obsessed about the status quo never being an option, even when you're at the top of your game. And by the way, background, Mary's going to ask, why am I bringing up a tiny little NBA basketball? Mike knows why. Because, Mike, in addition to the voiceover work, in addition to being the main person as a starter over at uh, Forest Hill Field Club, Mike has a connection to our basketball team out of New York. As we're doing this, the playoffs are going on. Trust me, they're not in them. The New York Knicks. Mike, 30 seconds, your Knicks connection, because if you're not improving, you're going backwards, and they're going backwards. But you were there at a different time. Am I correct, sir? I was a ball boy for the Knicks' last championship team in 1973. I was with them in 71, 72, and 72, 73. Luckily enough, both years, we went to the finals. My second year, my freshman year of college, we won the NBA championship, and the Knicks have not won another one uh, in almost 50 years now, Steve. And also, Mike is very close to the great Earl, the Pearl, Monroe, uh, and a lot of other history there. I, I, Elvis sitting there going, really? That happened? Yeah, it was before your time, my friend. Mary, real quick, <laughs> before I go to the voiceover stuff, go ahead, Mary. Oh, I was going to go to the voiceover stuff. So you just go ahead, to me, it. so that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, so Mike, obviously in life, Steve talked about the status quo is never an option. What made you pivot? I mean, it's complete 180 going from being a starter at golf and then switching over and also doing on the side voiceover work. Where does that passion come from? Well, I was, I was a broadcasting major in college. I worked in minor league baseball for a few years. So I did this many, many years ago. And it's kind of been my passion, and I put it on the back burner like we do uh, at times throughout our lives. And I just wanted to do this again so that when I retire from what I'm doing now in golf down the road, that I have something else to do, something that I love doing. And it, I'm doing it now in my spare time, weekends and the evenings. And, uh, you know, the bottom line, I like talking. <laughs> I, I know somebody else that likes talking, so I'm not surprised <laughs> that you and Steve have become very close friends. Mary. Uh, Go ahead, Mike. I appreciate that. And, and Steve and I have had some great conversations over the years, and he knows that that has always been a passion for me. So I've appreciated, uh, you, you know, you bringing it up, and it's just something that I enjoy and, uh, and I will do for the rest of my life. And again, check out on our website. Sylvester will put it up, standdeskdeliver.com. Also, the video that you're seeing, Mike, Mike, real quick, how many times did I try to go out on a golf court Golf, Mary, stop shaking your I, head. I think, I think as a joke, Sylvester should put up a little bit of your video uh, juxtaposed against Mike's video so we could see before and after. <laughs> Listen, also, I wouldn't mind showing the video real quick. I took the video because I wanted to help the team out and show that I wasn't just a prima donna, which clearly I am. I said, let me go out and shoot video. Mike, the video was shot the wrong way, correct? Uh, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I went while, out again. While driving a golf cart. So while going over all of the divots and whatever they call them on a golf course, and it's being narrated all at the same time. Well, they're not divots. We'll leave that alone, Mary. They're holes. Oh, whatever. The, the, okay. So then Mike gave me a pep talk to go out a second time. The driver was Anthony Perillo. Thank you for your service in the Newark uh, Police Department, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> and he's not a great driver or a great golfer either. But he's driving, and I'm taking video. And Mike, did I do that wrong as well? Oh, you did, sir. <laughs> so Mike With just said to me, so Mike just said, why don't you just stick to the one thing you're a little bit good at, which is this. So that's it. You got to stay in your lane, right, Mike? Um, you do. But as I told you that day, I personally do appreciate the effort that you made, especially the fact that you went out a second time. Mary, do you appreciate the effort or is it just ridiculous? It was it was a little bit ridiculous. I, I did enjoy watching the videos, but 
the fact that you thought that they were almost admissible, <laughs> it, it was it was great. It was so it was cute. It, it was as yeah. if your child brings you a drawing of a hippo and you say, "Oh, that's a great elephant or a great lion." It's just I I I was trying to be nice, and finally I said, "Stop, just stop." You, by the way, you can tell why this show is not on PBS and on commercial television because <laughs> you can never get away with this. So the video you are seeing that Sylvester is putting in post production is shot by the great, multi-talented Mike Spenley, the voice from God. Mike Spenley, thank you so much. The director of play, the starter at Forest Hill Field Club, owner of Mike Spenley VoiceOver. It's good to see you, Mike. See you on the course soon. Thank you very much, both Steve and Mary. Thank you. Good stuff. Lessons in leadership right back after this. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. Welcome back to Lessons in Leadership. Uh, Mary Gamba, Steve Adubato. I want to thank our good friend Mike Spenley over at Forest Hill Field Club, Rob Marziato, and uh, the owner, and also Jason Fury, the uh, head pro. Check out that interview we did with Jason. Great stuff. So, Mary, listen, um, you're, does, Joey, does Joey play golf? Does Joey, your son, play golf? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Joey and Will and my husband all play golf, and I am a really good golf cart driver. I, I, I am pride myself in that. And, and, and the thing that was said, in all seriousness, the video is very bad that I shot, but he, mm -hmm. here's the thing I keep thinking. I was trying to show, this is a leadership show. I was actually trying to show that I could get in there with my hands and do something that was valuable for the production other than being, you know, this, whatever this is. And I did it twice and I failed. Mm -hmm. The video is not usable. And why, why are you smiling? Uh, you give me no, no I, points for even trying. I give you points for trying. Uh, I definitely do. And I think that it's really important, but I think it's also a perfect leadership lesson that people do have their strengths. You need to play to their strengths. We often say, stay in your lane. And we all have our things that we're good at and we have things that maybe we're not so good at. So I yeah, but love I'm the sorry, effort. Mary, for interrupting, but we also challenge that because I'll also tell people, get out of your lane, mm -hmm. uh, get comfortable being uncomfortable. We're gonna push you outside of, Mary, your lane was not to be a broadcaster. Your lane was not to be a public communicator. Your lane, you told me, was to be behind the scenes. I get nervous, mm -hmm. I get red, what, whatever. Now you're who you are. So the question is, what's this deal with the lane? If you got out of it, why can't I just go back and decide I want to take more video? I think That's you can. Not usable. I think no, no. In that situation, though, that's a perfect case in point for then come if you really want to do this and we could experiment. I, I heard you say you're going there I on don't. Sunday. <laughs> uh, it's taking feedback and really listening to what that feedback is. And it's a perfect lesson because say if you did, let's just say hypothetically, you really wanted to learn how to do it. That would mean then you need to truly listen to the direction that's being given. Uh, case in point, you know, I had said, listen, if you're going to take more video, don't do it while driving the car. Just stand in one spot, turn you it told sideways. Me to do it this and, way, not this yeah, way. And, and not while driving. Uh huh. Not while driving. And, you know, I get the video back and it was still up, which was funny. All and right. you were still driving the cart. So it's not about a golf cart, but it's about um, literally being open-minded. And I love that because it did then cause Mike to go out, get some really great video that hopefully is going to make that interview come to life. And again, Sylvester on the back end, while Elvin is directing and Scarlett be, is behind the scenes here uh, doing a great camera work and April's doing makeup and Sylvester's on the back end doing what Amy, he's doing. Amy on the back end as well, doing our closed, closed captioning. Cap. Yep. Hey, Mary, real quick. I want to do this. The thing with John Sarno previously, uh, I saw someone say one time, this is important. We talk about retention, retention of your best people. It's been said more than once, but I saw this recently, that people, employees do not leave jobs. They leave their boss. Do you believe that? I, it, I don't believe that it's all or nothing. I think that there's a variety of factors that come into someone's decision to leave, but more importantly, someone's decision to stay with an organization. So I believe that maybe 25% of it, maybe up to 50% is the leader, depending upon the size of the organization. We have a very small organization. So 
I think it is different in that in that case where I think it would probably be closer to 50% would have to do with the boss, but 25% is the boss, 25% the people that you work with, 25% the work that you are doing, and then 25% just other factors, everything from, you know, is the commute, does the commute make sense for me? Do the hours make sense for me? Do I, do I find this fulfilling what I'm doing? Uh, so all of those factors do go into it, but I don't think it's just, mm. e it's too easy to just say that it's the boss. Here's the thing, I know and we've talked about this before on Lessons in Leadership, but, and, and you know, Mary and I have been working on a book for the last year and a half. It is, the working title is Lessons in Leadership 2.0, colon, what about the I think we just, stuff? we're gonna abbreviate it, just the tough stuff. Yeah, well, the tough stuff, and one of the tough stuff chapters that I've not written yet because I, I don't know why it's so hard for me to write about this. P.S. There's a, a chapter that quoting the great Ken Blanchard, refire, don't retire, which is a chapter that talks about why I don't plan to retire anytime soon. And Mary's retiring in about a week. So uh, she wants to get out of here quick. So in all seriousness, um, I, I'm having a hard time writing a chapter about the really good people on your team who leave and what responsibility we as leaders have to take when they do. We've lost some talented people. And I know they're like, it's not you, it's this other opportunity, I wanna make a change. And I'm sitting there going, flexibility, try to pay them well, advancement, creativity, not micromanaging them in terms of their time, who's remote, who's whatever they need, family first, work-life balance, sorry, I'm leaving. I have a hard time not taking that personally. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Got a minute left, go ahead. Yeah, no, and I think it's important as a boss and a leader to first re reflect and really think about, was there anything I could have done differently? Should I do have done something more? Once you answer those questions, and as you said, we check off all of those box boxes, flexibility and uh, caring about our team and compensation for a nonprofit is competitive, uh, all of that. But then COVID happened. And people can now work for other organizations remotely. So I think COVID really was a double-edged sword for a lot of employers because it opened up the, the job pool for people to really look outside of their small little pond. Now, literally the sky is the limit. So if they said, oh, I really wanna go work for a nonprofit that's focusing on dog rescue, they can because- That's Mary's that, thing, dog rescue. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just know, some random yeah. thing she said. Hypothetically, um, but, but it would- You're gonna make an happen. announcement here on Lessons in Leadership that you- You got me, Steve. Everyone's hearing it for the first time today. I'm giving my two weeks. No, I'm not. No, I, I love what I do here. And, and, and I think I am a perfect example. I love what I do. I am very, I feel fulfilled, but that's not to say that I don't have a dream to do something to leave a legacy. And that legacy for me is animal and dog rescue. So I, the, it, it just helps me this to is understand. Your, stop, Mary, <laughs> at 30 seconds less, but is this not, other than your, your wonderful family, your two boys, your husband, Bill, is this not your legacy working with me? Uh, it's part of my legacy. Everything that we do is part of our legacy. So sure. But on the flip side, definitely at some point in my life, I do definitely want to uh, help dogs because they cannot help themselves. The great Alvin Badger writes in the chat, quote, Steve, I'm living my dream every day, just working for you. Goodbye. Now, is that <laughs> goodbye you're leaving or goodbye we have to go, Alvin? We have to go. Thank you, Alvin. Two announcements, two resignations right here on Lessons in Leadership. I'm Steve Adubato. I'm joking. <laughs> Mary has to give two-year notice, not two weeks. Mary Gamba, Steve Adubato, Lessons in Leadership. See you next time. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ford Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Kessler Foundation, Veolia, Resourcing the World, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato. And my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, 
and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine.